Welcome back to the book of Genesis. Today we're going to tackle chapter 40, The Prisoner's Dream. Let's get it. It came to pass after these things that the butler, the baker of the king of Egypt, offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard of the prisoner and placed there Joseph was confined. Verse 4, And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. He served them so that they were in custody for a while. Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, dreamed a dream, both of them, each man's dream, in one night, and each man's dream was with its own interpretation. Verse 6, And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his Lord's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? Verse 8, And they said to him, we each have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. Verse 9, Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream a vine was before me, and in, in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded and blossomed, shot forth, and its cluster brought forth ripe grapes. The Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and passed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Verse 12, And Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. Verse 14, But remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. Verse 15, For indeed I was stolen away from the land of Hebrews, and I also have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream. There I had three white baskets in my hand. In the uppermost basket, there were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of my basket on my head. So Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are the three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang it on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all the servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among the servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. End of chapter 40. Well, we continue to see bad things happen to Joseph, but I am also seeing the picture of Jesus Christ here in a way. We see the three days. Verse 13, Now within three days Pharaoh will lift up your head. The three days, of course, is how long after Jesus was crucified, he was buried for three days, and then he rose again. And in verse 15, we see Joseph saying, For indeed I was stolen away from the land of Hebrews, and also I have done nothing here that they should put me into this dungeon. 
And again, we see the three days mentioned here. We are going to read chapter 41 today. Pharaoh's dream. Let's get it. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he stood by the river. Verse 2. Suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine-looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke. He slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Verse 6, Then behold, seven thin heads blighted by the east wind sprang up after them. Then the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. So Pharaoh woke indeed. It was a dream. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them in his dream, told him of his dream, but there was no one that could interpret them for Pharaoh. Verse 9, Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we were, we each dreamed a dream in one night, and and I said of us, dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass just as he interpreted for us. So it happened he restored me to my office and he hanged him. Verse 14, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and shaved. He shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. Verse 15, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said that you, that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Verse 17, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly seven cows came up out of the river, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt and ugliness, it's such ugliness that I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. Verse 20, and, it, and the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven, and the fat cows. Then when they had eaten them up, no one could have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as the beginning, so I awoke. Verse 22, also I saw in my dream that suddenly seven heads came up, one one, on one stalk, full and good. Then, behold, seven heads, withered, thin, blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. And the thin heads devoured the seven good heads. So I told this to the magicians, and there was no one who could explain it. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaohs are one God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. Verse 27, Then the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east winds are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh that he is about to do. 
what he is about to do. Verse 29, Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, seven years of famine will arise, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will deplete the land. Verse 31, So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. Verse 35, And let them gather all the food for those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Then the food shall be as a reserve for the land of the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land may not perish during the famine. Verse 37, Joseph's rise to power. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this man whom the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit of God, who in whom in whom is the Spirit of God. Verse 39, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all there is, no one has discerning all that and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all over my people shall, all of my people shall be ruling, ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne Will I be greater than you? Verse 41. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him, him in the garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had. And he cried out before him, Bow the knee, so that he set him over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zamanath Panah, and he gave him a wife, Arasnath, the daughter of Pati Provaj, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Verse 46, 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundancy so he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities and laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. Verse 49, Joseph gathered very much grain and as the sands of the seas until he stopped counting for it was without number. Verse 50, and so Joseph born two sons before the years of famine came, whose Asarneth, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore him. Joseph called the names of his firstborn Manasseh, for God had made me forget all of my toil in my father's house. In the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of affliction. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended. 
And seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said. The famine was in the land, but in all the land of Egypt was bread. So in all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, where whatever he said to you, do. The famine was all over the face of the earth. And Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land of Egypt. So all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands. End of chapter 41. And it was a long chapter. So we see... Pharaoh's dream, and Joseph is the one that is going to interpret it. So we see a lot of sevens here, and we see that there's going to be seven years of prosperity and seven years of famine. Again, having a little trouble seeing the picture of Jesus Christ here. And we see Joseph is, I think it said he's getting married or he got married, he comes to power, and then he has a wife. And Joseph has two sons by his wife. And firstborn is Manasseh, and the secondborn will be Ephraim. And we will see both of these names will be continuing on. And I believe these two brothers will not get along very well. And we have seen that in the past with two brothers not getting along. So we uh, come to the end of chapter 41 and we will now see Joseph's family, his brothers from his father Jacob, Israel, will start to come back into the picture and they will not even know their brother Joseph who they had sold into slavery so long ago. So that is the end of chapter 41. So in the next chapter, we will continue to read the book of Genesis. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. God bless. Thanks for watching.